Sue Gerhardt, Why Love Matters, How Affection Shapes a Baby's Brain. Why do love and affection play such a crucial role in shaping a baby's brain? In Sue Gerhardt's book, Why Love Matters, How Affection Shapes a Baby's Brain, we dive into the biological and social implications of a baby's early experiences and their long-term effects. Through a detailed analysis of the development and the importance of the orbitofrontal cortex, Gerhardt explains how positive social interaction molds the social brain, allowing us to understand and regulate complex emotions. The book also explores the consequences of stress and social deprivation on brain development, highlighting the importance of nurturing relationships from infancy. Delve into this book summary as we unpack the intricacies of the human brain and the inextricable bond between love and mental well-being. The Evolution of the Social Brain Humans have a triune brain, consisting of three stages of evolution. The social brain, which is responsible for empathy and complex emotions, is the last stage of this development. It allows us to go beyond instinctive behaviors and diversify our emotional range. Unlike other basic functions, the social brain is not present at birth and only develops through social interactions. English poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge once noted that tigers remain the same whether in solitude or a community of thousands. However, humans are wired differently. Our relationships with others alter our essence, according to Coleridge. This concept is now called the social brain. The human brain didn't develop solely in one stage, rather, it has three stages of evolution. The first stage is the brainstem, which regulates the essential life functions like respiration. The second stage, the limbic system, which is a mammalian addition, lets us experience basic emotions, nurture our offspring, and respond to stimuli. The final stage is the cerebral cortex, responsible for the social brain's formation, making humans distinct from other mammals. This allows us to control our emotions, follow social cues, and experience empathy. When we have emotional responses, the social brain helps us diversify them to an extensive range. Thus, we can identify feelings such as love, shame, guilt, sadness, happiness, and pleasure, instead of primal emotions. It's like seeing the world in technicolor instead of black and white. Newborn babies' brains possess systems for survival, such as a functional nervous system, a visual system, and the brainstem's core consciousness. Despite that, it does not possess the social brain. Development occurs as the child grows and interacts with surroundings. How social interaction shapes a baby's brain. Babies lack the brain capacity to control their behavior, as their social brain only develops after birth. The orbitofrontal cortex, responsible for emotional intelligence, needs social experiences to develop. This developmental process is influenced by experience dependency. Social deprivation in the early years of life can cause permanent brain damage, as sociability depends on social interaction. Pleasure and development. The pleasure a baby derives from social interaction is crucial for cognitive and emotional growth, and it's all thanks to the way pleasure stimulates the orbitofrontal cortex. Touch and looking at caregivers are two interlinked components that make these interactions pleasurable. When a baby is touched, held, and cuddled, his breathing deepens, and his heart rate and nervous system synchronize with that of his father. Similarly, when a baby gazes into his mother's eyes, he can read her dilated pupils and set off a biochemical chain reaction in his brain. Beta endorphins and dopamine are released, which enhance glucose uptake, insulin regulation, and tissue growth in the social and prefrontal brains. Pleasurable social interaction is foundational to human culture and explains why we hug bereaved people or seek comfort through a good massage. Social inputs and brain development. A baby's brain is determined by a combination of genes and social patterns. While genes lay the blueprint, social inputs determine which connections are kept and which are pruned. Cognitive construction peaks between 6 to 12 months, and a dense network of cognitive possibilities is created. Then, pruning occurs, keeping only those connections that are useful in helping individuals navigate the world. 
The brain is an anticipating machine, providing expectations of likely outcomes to help individuals predict future events. Social experiences create expectations and get stored, while experiences that are not likely to happen again are discarded. Understanding the harmful effects of stress. Stress is often associated with being an adult and dealing with life's challenges, but it can also damage our health and that of our babies. The human stress response is an evolutionary reflex that dates back to prehistoric times, where it was useful in dealing with life-threatening dangers. However, in modern society, stress is often caused by social status and acceptance. While short-term stress can be useful, prolonged stress can damage the immune system and lead to sickness. Adults can manage stress effectively, but babies are at risk if parents don't manage their cortisol levels. Understanding the harmful effects of stress can help us take necessary steps to ensure a healthy life. The importance of caregivers for babies' mental health. Babies depend on their caregivers for survival and when they are separated, even for short periods, they can experience high levels of stress. Neuroscientists have linked separation from caregivers to the release of cortisol and CRF, which can lead to long-term effects on a baby's stress management abilities. However, Babies who have been touched and held a lot have a higher number of cortisol receptors, which suggests that less exposure to cortisol in babyhood translates to increased stress management later on. Stressed parents, stressed children. The absence or poor quality of a mother's presence can have a significant biochemical effect on her baby. Stressful environments can lead to increased cortisol levels in both parents and kids, and parents' addiction issues can also affect their children. Studies on primate mothers subjected to unpredictable foraging showed that their offspring's brains were flooded with stress hormones, affecting their ability to relax. Similarly, a 2002 study by psychologist Marilyn Essex suggested that children living with stressed mothers during infancy are more likely to show high cortisol levels and find it harder to cope with difficulties later in life. Thus, the key message is clear, stressed parents have stressed children. Importance of love in babyhood. If a baby is protected from discomfort and love during their early years, their brain develops more cortisol receptors, which allows for better stress management later in life. On the other hand, social deprivation during babyhood can cause an overactive stress response that may lead to anxiety and depression in adulthood. This deprivation can also impair the development of the social brain leading to a reduction in dopamine synapses and lower levels of norepinephrine. Ultimately, the more loved and protected a baby is, the more likely they are to develop into happy adults. In Why Love Matters, How Affection Shapes a Baby's Brain, Sue Gerhardt emphasizes the power of love, nurturing relationships, and positive social experiences in fostering healthy brain development. From building the orbitofrontal cortex responsible for emotional intelligence, to understanding the effects of stress on both adults and babies, the author stresses the importance of early social interactions in determining the individual's mental health and happiness, later in life. The development of the social brain, aided by touch and vision, shapes our capacity to navigate complex emotions and form strong, meaningful bonds. Investing in love and affection during a child's formative years is thus not only vital for their immediate well-being, but also has lasting implications on their resilience and adaptability throughout life.